PLC programming with iTrilogy. Getting started. Some iTrilogy instructions. Here are a few key iTrilogy instructions. One, setting up input output labels using the IO table. Two, creating a self clearing latch. Three, displaying and displaying and clearing a message using the set LCD function, special fun custom function. Timing, counting, toggling using the toggle IO function, and latching. Okay, getting started with iTrilogy. Now, I am going to show you how to create this same program from scratch. So first of all, um, we're going to go in to, first of all, we're going to create a, a new program. So file, okay, new, clear contents, yes, okay, file, new, okay, all right, clear contents, um, yes, define IO table. All right. Okay, so we're starting. Sorry about that. We're going to start. So we go edit IO table and we create our, our, our input. So we want one input to be start. Right? We type in start and hit enter. And then we want to type in stop as our second input. So we come down to input two, click in the space. It didn't work then. Hit enter. I'm trying to, it's somehow not responding. Seem to be stuck. Okay. For some unknown reason, the program is not wasn't responding. So start S T O P. Hit stop. Right. Then we want to program the uh, sorry define the output which is motor. So we go to outputs, you pull down the menu, you go to outputs and we're going to type motor. Enter. Okay. Right, so we close off the IOs and we can pro proceed to program. Now, a little trick to see the programming um, contacts and outputs, you press spacebar. So spacebar, now you can see the various um, functions that um, elements that you can use to program it. All right, so I want to start on the left with a normally open contact. So we click on this contact and we want that to be an input. So we scroll to inputs and we select start. Okay, all right. So after the start, we want another input called stop. We want it to be normally closed, but we first have to select normally open. So we select here and we select stop. And then, when you look here, you can change the contact from a normally open to a normally closed, or vice versa, by clicking here. The contact has been changed to normally closed. Is that okay? Yes. Okay. Right. Then finally, we want an output. So, mouse over, add an, you see here, add a contact or coil. And we want motor. Now, remember, we want to be able to this start, if it's a momentary contact switch, if we press that, the motor will go on and off, right? And will not hold on, but hold in. But if you want to hold in the motor, we can now put a branch around the start, which mirrors the output of the motor, right? So we highlight it where we want to put the branch, and then go to branch, this one, you see the branch here? We click on that, and we add motor to that. Right? 
hit enter and we are there. So now we have the start, the stop, the motor out. So if we were to run this program now, okay, simulate, simulate, run, reset all IOs, right? We here we have the simulator. If you press left click, it's momentary contact. It latches in and see that it is latched in. And if you click stop, it goes out. Okay. All right. So just a point out for the inputs, a left click is a momentary and a right click. If I were to right click, it will be full, totally on. All right. And you won't be able to stop it. Right. Yeah. You, you'll be able to stop it only temporarily. Right, but what the point I'm trying to make is that uh, right, left click is momentary, right click is um, on always until you switch it off. Okay, all right. So in another video, we will add some more elements to this. We will um, add a display, right, and uh, uh, I will show you, well, I'll show you how to program a display. Like for instance, want to say motor is running or the motor, motor has stopped. Okay. All right. In this video, I will show you how to display a message using the custom function set LCD. Okay. So. And, and in this case, we want to display motor is running. All right. So first of all, we go to edit IO table and we look down for custom function. And we want this, we want to give it a name. We're going to say message, call it message. Okay. And enter. Close off. We go back now to edit and we go edit custom function and we select it. We're just adjusting the screen. Okay, so we, we type in set L C D comma one comma one comma and we open quotation marks and whatever we put in quotation marks will be displayed. So we say more tor is running the one one places the the start of the display on the first line of the um the first column of the first line the display has up to four um uh, rows rows so we are writing in the first row at the first um column in that row okay so set lcd comma one comma one and uh, in quotation marks, should have been quotation mark, motor is running. We close that off. All right. And now we go into our program, hit space bar. Now we want to add a wrong. So to add a wrong, you click to the end of the existing wrong. Okay. It's highlighted and you hit enter. Right. So we want to say when the start, when a bu button is pressed, we want to call on that custom function. So we add a start at the beginning. We add start. Okay. And uh, then we go look here. We go to add a function. So click on F9 here. And we want to select a custom function we're going to select <coughs> excuse me differentiate up custom function 
And then we're going to select the custom function, which is message. Select it, enter. So we now have the custom function called message here that would respond to the start. All right, so let's simulate now and see if it works. So simulate, run, reset all IOs. Okay. Now it's telling me that <clears throat> there's an error. So the, I believe it's telling me I should not have had a comma there. So we're going to take up the comma. Okay. And let's hope, let's go, close off. Right. And we're going to simulate. Simulate, run. Okay. So, what you will see now is that when I press the start button, okay, I'm trying to get um, them all fit on to my screen. When I press the start button, it says motor is running. Okay? Motor is running. We are now going to look at how to clear a message. Okay? Um, let's simulate and show you. Okay? If we press start, Right, if you press start, you're going to see here, motor is running. And if you press stop, it is clear. So how do we do that? Okay. All right, so we have to create a custom function that when we press stop, you will clear the message, okay? This is the custom function. So let's go inside and look at the custom function to see how it is made up. So we go edit, custom function, clear message, and see. This, these are, uh, this, uh, here, is, here is the instruction for um, clearing the message. Set LCD, zero, zero, CHR, dollar sign in brackets one so that would clear the the message in the first custom function that we we created the message that said motor is running okay so that's what we do so you have to create a second custom function and in it write and note I, i've called this one clear message and 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 inside the instruction is set lcd 0, 0, CHR, dollar sign, and in brackets, 1. All right? Good. Okay. So, again, let's, let's um, maybe what I should show you is um, edit IO table, and we look inside custom function and you can see that there are two in there number one the first one was the message custom function and the second one is the clear message custom function in this video we're going to add timing to our program right so we want to include a timer that will shut down the motor after a, a specified time. So here's how we will do that. We're going to add a timer. So edit IO table timers okay we're going to add a timer motor timer and uh, we have to give a value let's say we want the motor to run for five seconds 
you know, in trilogy, the the time base is 0.1 of a second. So to get five seconds, you have to type in 50. 50 and end. Okay, so we have that in. We can close this off. Now we can program the timer. So we come to the click space bar, come to the end of the round, hit enter, and it allows us to add on add an additional round. So, so we're going to start. So when we sorry, when when the motor out is running. When the, when the motor coil is energized, okay. Once that is energized, we are going to call a timer. Output. We're going to call timer. Enter. We have a timer, right? So as soon as the motor begins to run. We're going to, this timer is going to begin a time. Now at the end of the timer, when the timer is up, we want to break the circuit. So we go back. And we want to put in the timer, a normally closed contact for the timer in here. So to do that, we, we now add contact motor timer okay and we we need to change that to a normally close we change here the contact has been changed to normally close okay yes right and now we can see it okay now we want to simulate so if we start hit the start button See the timer is counting down, three seconds, two seconds, and the motor should stop. Right, let's start again. We can either stop the motor by pressing the stop button or allowing it to time out. So hit start, and we can hit stop, and it goes off, or we can hit start again, and allow it to time out. So we have added timing to our ladder circuit. We will now add a counter to our program. For instance, if we wanted to say stop, prevent the motor from being started, if three attempts have already been made, in other words, on the fourth attempt, we, we want to inhibit a fourth attempt, all right? So we can add a counter to the circuit, right? And every time the start button is pressed, it will count. And when a count of three has been reached, then the fourth count would not allow, the, the fourth start will not allow the motor to start. So let's do that now. All right, so we go edit, are your table now we look for counters let's call it number of starts and we're gonna put a value three okay enter no so we can close this off we can now program our counter so we go to remember space bar click on the end of the last rung click enter and you can now proceed to write a new round. So start normally open contact and we're going to use the 
inputs, which will be the start input. Okay, and that start input we got to tie to a counter. Or counter. Right? Good. So we see we have start tied to a counter. So every time that count is gonna that is gonna count upwards, and when that counter has reached um the the, the count three, we're gonna tell it, we're gonna tell this wrong, we're gonna place it in here as a normal contact. So when the count is reached, it will break the circuit and prevent the motor from being started again. So let's let's do that. So we're gonna add a contact. And we're gonna put counter. And we're gonna change that to right. So we're going to try it now. Okay, you're going to simulate. Okay, let's simulate. So we start, and the motor runs, and we stop it. Okay. We're going to start, the motor runs, we're going to stop it. We're going to start, the motor runs, and we're going to stop it. We're going to attempt to start, and we cannot run. Okay? All right, so let's reset and start again. Let's try that again. We're going to start, one start. You have to check that because sometimes you may have to to, to add or subtract a, a, a number to the counter. Okay, that stop. It timed out and stop. We're going to start a second time. And we stop it. That's two times. We're going to start. We try to start. Now we see we did not reach the third start. So what we will have to do, we have to go back into our counter and put change the value to four. Okay, so let's do that. Let's go um, edit. You have IO table. See here, numbers thing. We're going to put four in there. Enter. Okay. Okay. Let's try that again. Simulate. Run. Reset all things. So let's go. Make sure, okay, let's start. Motor runs, stop. That's one time. Start, motor runs, stop. Two times. Start, motor stops. Three times. And start. Right? It did not allow it to start. Okay? So you, you have to kind of debug it a bit. If, if you... Um, I've not tried to memorize how many to put in to get the exact number, but if it doesn't give you the correct number, you can change the number up or down accordingly. All right, so that is adding a counter to your circuit. All right, so basically what we've done, we've created a counter that counts every start. And when that counter is up, the counter contact is going to open, and so you cannot start the motor. I will now show you a neat feature called Toggle I.O. I'm sure you would have come across a piece of equipment where there's one push button for starting and stopping the machine. So you press a button, which is the on off button. You press it once and it switches on. And you press it again, the same button, and it switches off of the device. Let's say a fan, it could be a fan. So I'm going to show you that and right now. A very um, neat feature called Toggle I.O. Alright, so where I'm going to create a new ROM 
here and I'm going to call I'm going to use on off so so edit IO table I'm going to go to my input and I'm going to have an input number three call on off okay good and I'm going to create an output called fan so I'm going to turn on and off my fan with a single button okay single momentary contact button so let's do that so we have to create a custom function called toggle io so edit edit custom function and we can call this Let's call it toggle. You can give it any suitable name. I call it toggle. Right? And in note, the instruction is O G G L E I O toggle I O. And you simply write the name of the op the output you want to toggle. And this case is fan. So toggle I O fan means that you're gonna turn on and off that fan with the same um, push button switch. Okay. Okay, let's, let's program now. On off. We're gonna call up, we're gonna differentiate up custom function. And we're gonna use toggle. So we're gonna we're gonna be calling on the the toggle. Um, custom function, right? It could have been, we could have called it some other name. That's how we call toggle, right? And, uh, and that should toggle on and off the fan. Okay, so let's simulate and see if it works. Okay, and we go on. Fan comes on, hit the same button again fan goes off. A very neat feature. So we want a single input that would turn on and off a device. So press on, the fan comes on, press the same button again, the fan goes off. That is called toggle IO. Toggle IO. Latching. A latch may be used to capture a present transitory event for future use. For instance, if you have um, a sensor that is triggered momentarily, momentarily, and you want to use that event later on in the program, you have to capture it and store it for that future use. So that is one of the, the um, that is a use of the latch. So I will demonstrate how to do a latch. Okay, so first of all, Let's assume we're going to latch um, uh, uh, an event. So let's create a new event. So we go edit IO table. And I'm going to call that event pulse. Just give it a name. Pulse. And uh, I want an output. No, I can actually store it as an internal output and I'm gonna call it relay and I'm gonna call that capture pulse. Right? You can give it a suitable name. Capture pulse. Alright. So let's try that. Let's program it. So we gotta we gotta add a rung input input 
we can call it Perl and we have to go into this function here function 9 number 9 click on that and scroll to and look so we're going to look for a relay right latching relay output so that's what we want we want a latching relay output so we click you click on that and we want it going to be a relay so we do this pulse capture pulse okay so when we hit input four which is pulse momentarily is going to store that latch okay one cardinal rule though is that whenever you have a latch in a program you must also include a unlatch or clear latch all right so let's program let's program a clear latch so edit are your table and we can call that input clear clear right and then yes we just have to have a single input called clear and then we can clear that latch okay so let's close off you go to add the wrong and my wrong is being placed outside of outside of my outside of my okay sorry about that um my my wrong is going to occur outside my window so but I, nevertheless i will continue uh, and then i can show you it in by a simulation so i'm going to know um I'm going to type you can't see it on the screen but i'm going to do it nevertheless i'm going to hit clear and uh, i'm going to clear go to function look for clear latchly and we're going to clear what i'm going to be clearing i'm going to be clearing the relay which is clear pulse capture pulse okay you can barely see it inside the window all right so let's simulate Simulate, run, okay. So if I have a pulse, the capture pulse internal relay comes on and if I hit clear, it, it is cleared. Now, what is the difference between an internal relay and an external relay? An external relay is, uh, is internal to the program and you cannot see it at the output, right? And you do that because you may want to create, let's say for some reason, 20, 30, whatever, a large number of uh, flags. You do not want them to be, um, you do not want to use up all your available outputs. For instance, you may have a small PLC with only eight outputs or maybe only four outputs. So what you can do, you could do a lot of internal logic on the inside and uh, you could capture these um, events and store them as internal relays and then you can use add that to the logic and then finally output it it is true yes you can i can latch an uh, output but <clears throat> doing that i will be using up um outputs unnecessarily okay so we've gone through how to um uh, capture an event okay using the latch but remember please remember that whenever you have a latch somewhere in the program even if it's 20 rounds down 100 rounds down in the program you must have a clear okay that is why i, I tend to, to to go as a first option to the self-clearing la latch that we, we we taught you a bit earlier all right so wherever possible 
um, use a self clear latch. But when you have to, then when you have to use the the the, the normal latch that we've just um, created, you do that. But be certain to always clear any latches that you have created.